What's up guys, welcome back to DCS World and welcome back aboard the FA-18C Hornet by Eagle Dynamics for another tutorial. In this one, we're going to learn how to land this airplane. We've done taxi, takeoff, flying around, and you know, physics kind of dictates that what goes up must come down, so we do need to learn how to land it. A couple of concepts before we do, however. Uh, the concept of on-speed angle of attack. What do I mean by that? Well, in a landing configuration, that means with the airplane with full flaps and gear out, there is a certain angle of attack, or alpha, that we actually need to hit so that we touch down at a specific nose-up angle uh, that's defined by the flight manual, and this is primarily for carrier operations because we need to be at a certain angle so that our tail hook, which is way in the back of the airplane, can actually catch the arrestor wires on the carrier deck. Now we're not going to talk more in depth about that until a much later video when we discuss carrier operations, but for even for landing on an airfield or just a regular airport, getting into the practice of maintaining and uh, getting to on-speed angle of attack, or on-speed AOA for short, we're just saying on speed uh, is important and it's a good practice to get into. So uh, without actually landing, I'm going to demonstrate what on speed AOA actually looks like. So I'm at about 279 knots now with the auto throttles engaged. I'm going to disable the auto throttles and pull my power back to idle. And I'm just going to maintain level flight as I slow down. I do need to introduce a little bit of back stick to hold the horizon. 250 knots, below 250, I'm going to drop the gear. I'm also going to drop my flaps to full. And now there's a little bit more symbology on the HUD. You see that floating E, that staple? I'm just going to pause here real quick. Right here. This is called the E bracket. It's called the E bracket, well, because it looks like an E. And what that is, is a animated graphical representation of what on-speed AOA should look like. So I'm going to unpause here. And as we slow down, you're going to watch that E-bracket start to fall towards my path vector. Remember, the path vector is this little guy right in the middle here. And we're getting slow, so I'm going to introduce power. And right now, I'm kind of holding back stick. Notice how my path vector, I'm trying to keep my path vector inside that E bracket. Now, I don't want to do this with constant back stick, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply nose up trim. And we're going to try to get my path vector right in the middle of that E bracket. So it's right about there. One tick of forward trim. And in this configuration, with our gear out, our flaps out, our speed down, and our path vector in the middle of that E-bracket, this is what on-speed AOA looks like. So just real quick, I'm going to pause, and we're going to take a look at the outside of my airplane. Notice how high uh, my nose is with my gear and flaps out. This is the attitude, this is the on-speed angle that you're going to want on landing. And again, the reasons I mentioned before are primarily for carrier-based operations, but on the field it's important as well because uh, it, uh, it trips a couple of sensors when you do land uh, a number of... Basically, just do it. Trust me on that. Just do it. Uh, it'll, it makes landing a lot easier. You don't have to worry about flaring and all of that. But this is what on-speed AOA looks like. You sort of see the sight picture. Your nose is slightly raised up. Your path vector is in the middle of the E-bracket. And if I unpause again, uh, in most other airplanes with um, AOA indexers, we have one here, and we see the flashing donut in the middle. Generally, I'll look mostly at the E-bracket rather than the AOA indexer. The E-bracket is just easier. So this is on-speed AOA. Okay. What I advise you to do is before you actually go land, 
Just get into straight and level flight and practice maintaining on speed AOA. It is very important and will save your butt much later when you go to land on the carrier. For now though, I'm actually going to pick the gear and flaps up. And I'm going to speed back up a little bit. And we're going to go land. So stand by while I get down low and prepared for landing. All right, so we're approaching Abu Dhabi International Airport. I'm going to land on, uh, that looks like runway 31 left. We're going to make a left-hand pattern break here. Just getting slowed down. Uh, quick active pause so I can demonstrate this. Um, we have a switch down below here that can switch our altitude reading on the HUD from barometric to radar. Uh, for landing, it's a good practice to switch it to your radar altimeter because that way you then use the radar altimeter and that tells you your height above the ground fairly accurately. You also can optionally set your altimeter to QFE, but I'm not personally a fan of that. Um, that's mostly my civil aviation experience kind of talking there, but uh, you can also set a QFE for a specific airfield. I'm not going to go into what QFE means right now, but just know that that's an option if you don't want to use the radar altimeter. We're going to use the radar altimeter today, and we can see that the radar altimeter is selected now because we have the little R next to the altimeter box on our HUD. So we can see Abu Dhabi International Airport off in the distance there. We're at about 3,700 feet above the ground. I'm going to unpause, and I'm just descending now towards the runway. I'm going to get lined up with the runway and continue descending to about, about 2,000 feet above the ground. That's going to be a good pattern altitude. Anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 is pretty good. You don't have to be super precise. I'm just going to get lined up with the runway here. And uh, I do want to keep my speed up, so I'm getting a little slow, so I'm going to add a little power to keep my speed up. We want to be at around 300 knots for this. Maybe a little over 300 is fine. We're going to do what's called a pattern uh, break, so an overhead break. What does that mean? I'm just going to pause real quick and talk. We're lined up with the runway. An overhead break means you're going to line up with the runway heading. You're going to fly over the runway at about 300 knots. When you cross about the center of the runway, you're going to snap roll either to the left or the right. In this case, we're going to snap roll to the left, and you're going to pull at about 3G or so on the G meter, uh, you kind of want to aim for what's called 1% of airspeed. So if you're starting at 300 knots, you're going to want to pull at 3G and relax as your speed decreases. What this is enabling us to do is it's enabling us to do a nice controlled pattern. So we're doing an upwind, a crosswind, a downwind, and a base and final leg uh, with this overhead brake pattern. And this is what they do in the military, both in the Air Force and the Navy. They do some variation of this overhead brake, and this is good practice for when we start practicing case one recoveries on the carrier, because you will do an overhead brake pattern like this pretty much as standard when landing on the aircraft carrier. But for now, uh, I'm going to just demonstrate what this looks like. Uh, it sort of happens really fast. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's watch. I'll unpause now. <clears throat> We're approaching the airfield, trying to stay lined up with the runway. I'm a little off to the right here, so slight correction. little high so nose down I'm trying to keep that power so I maintain about you know 315 knots or so is pretty good nineteen hundred feet is good three seventeen we're getting to the runway now. And I'll wait until the other end of the runway sort of disappears beneath my nose. All right, right about there is good. Snap, roll left, and pull, throttle to idle. Pull a little hard. Maintain your altitude. 
Below 200 knots, we're going to drop our gear and our flaps to full. And we're just going to keep this full until we are downwind of the runway. Right about there, we're going to level out. It's at this point we want to get ourselves set up for on-speed AOA, as I mentioned before. So use that trim, capture that E-bracket. We're going to beam the runway now. Maintaining altitude for the moment, we're at 1,500 feet, which is fine. Got to keep that E-bracket centered. When we get about 45 degrees uh, down angle from the end of the runway, we can start to turn in final. And right about there, so we're going to turn in gently. Need to add a little bit of power so we don't pitch down too hard. Still maintaining on-speed AOA, as you can see. And we're going to turn to line up with final on the runway. Relax a little bit. Just getting lined up with the runway now. And throttles back. We're a little high, but that's okay. I'm going to reduce power to sharpen our descent rate. On touchdown, we want to be... just going to pause here real quick. On touchdown, we want to be at about 750 feet per minute descent rate. As you can see, my descent rate right here with the vertical velocity indication is a bit high at 1,600 feet, but that's going to level out as I approach the runway. Um, it's a pretty long runway, so I can land a little bit long just to demonstrate. Um, I'm no, I'm by no means an expert at landing the Hornet, uh, but I think I can do a reasonably good job. So uh, let's uh, continue. Unpause. Going to try to aim for the touchdown zone there. All right, we're on short final now. Arresting the descent rate a little bit with power. Quick pause before we actually touch down. Do not flare in this airplane. The reason for that is this airplane is designed to land at a very specific angle of attack, and if we flare, we're going to upset that angle of attack. As I mentioned, we're going to become off speed, and it can create problems for us. We also have what's called a weight on wheels switch that enables when we touch down and it requires a fairly hard touchdown. Uh, the guides actually describe touching down in the Hornet as a controlled crash and that's sort of what it should feel like. It's going to feel like you're going to break the airplane, but you're really not. This is a Navy jet. Its landing gear can handle it. So uh, again, reminder, do not flare this airplane. So unpausing. Approaching the runway. And we're down. Open our speed brakes. Tap on the brakes. The Hornet's brakes on the ground aren't really that good. You might have noticed I had my tail hooked down there. Uh, don't worry about that. And we're slow enough that we can now taxi off the runway. And come to a stop. We then, after landing checklist, we can clean up the airplane, flaps up to auto, speed brake closed. And that's it. That's how you land the Hornet, and that's the basics of on-speed AOA. Uh, don't take my landing example as gospel, um, because again, that wasn't perfect by any stretch. Um, but uh, it does require a lot of practice. I need more practice myself, 
So get out there and practice your landings, practice your on-speed AOA, and uh, we will see you soon for the next video. Take care.